Hello and welcome to the Friday, November 8th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Xavier today came across an interesting GitHub repo that advertises a Steam account checker. What this particular tool is supposed to do is for the online gaming distribution platform Steam, it will check for a list of usernames and passwords, whether or not they are correct. The only real sort of application I could think of for uh, this kind of tool is some kind of credential stuffing attack, but uh, well, it uh, just says that it's meant to also check your own credentials. Not sure if you really would need a tool like this. But this is not where the story ends. Anybody running the tool will actually be subjected to an info stealer. The Python script does include an encrypted and obfuscated info stealer component that will exfiltrate data to the author likely providing them with more steam credentials to verify if their tool is working correctly and cisco released a number of patches today one of them that sticks out affects their ultra reliable wireless backhaul or urwb system the vulnerability with a cvss score of 10 does allow an attacker with a crafted HTTP request to essentially use the web-based management interface to execute arbitrary code as most web applications run better as root, Cisco decided to follow this popular design route. And as a result, any commands executed will have full system access because, well, they are executed with root privileges. And talking about the web applications, there's a real great and detailed blog post by Andrea Menin with Secura Next, who is going over various issues with validating file uploads. Andrea not only does an excellent job going over some of the dangers of multi-part form data and how these structures are often difficult to parse, but also shows examples how various validators proxies for the most part, and applications like PHP, Node.js, and Python are possibly misinterpreting these various multi-part form data headers and then leading to bypasses of various filters, attempting to limit, for example, the upload of web shells. In my opinion, if there are just two things that you do, if you do allow file uploads, then number one, don't let the user pick the file name, and number two, do not upload the files into the document route. That'll prevent the vast majority of issues, but then again, I recommend you take a look at Andrea's blog for more details. And then we have a somewhat similar topic, a blog post by Perception Points. Arthur Basil Boo did discuss the dangers of concatenated zip files. So the problem here is that you have two zip files that are just appended to each other and some anti-malware or file inspection solutions will only look at the first of these two zip files while popular decompression tools like for example WinRAR will expand both of the files. So in this case an attacker could sneak a malicious file past your security controls and an unsuspecting user would then be exposed to the malware. Interesting uh, bypass technique and in general it's sometimes quite frustrating in how solutions are inconsistent in how they interpret even relatively common and simple file types like zip files. Then I got one more quick vulnerability for you before the weekend, and that's for the Veeam Backup Enterprise Manager. This vulnerability does allow an attacker to bypass authentication. However, the attacker must have a machine in the middle position in order to exploit this vulnerability. 
but I also don't consider this a must patch on Friday vulnerability given that in order to exploit this an attacker already needs to have quite a bit of access to your network and if they do have a machine in the middle position there is often other attacks that they may prefer. But if there is something else you want to spend your time on Friday afternoon with instead of patching systems, well, uh, the SANS Holiday Challenge has been made live today. It has a very different and more expanded format this time, which is why it's already going live so soon. So if you are not already sick of holiday tunes and if you don't have anything else to patch, then take a look at the SANS Holiday Hack channels. And that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.